Hello and welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonye Afyasimamon. Let's crack on, let's roll back the blind to the year 1514. And on this day, Mary Tudor, pictured right here, sister of King Henry VIII, became the third wife of King Louis XII of France. She was the Queen of England from July 1553 until her death in November 1558. She is best known for her vigorous attempt to reverse the English Reformation, which had begun during the reign of her father, Henry VII. So that's Mary Tudor, who got married on this day as the third wife of King Louis the Twelfth. We move on to the year 1757. Pictured here is Charles X. He was born on this day. He was King of France, died November 6th, 1836, at the age of 79 in Gorizia, Italy. So, I'm going to tell you a bit more about Charles X. Casale was King of France. But that reign was from the 16th of September 1824 until the 2nd of August 1830. An uncle of the uncrowned Louis the 16th, sorry, Louis the 17th, and younger brother to reigning kings Louis the 16th and Louis the 18th, he supported the latter in exile. After the Bourbon Restoration in 1814, Charles, as heir presumptive, became the leader of the ultra royalists, a radical monarchist faction within the French court that affirmed rule by divine right and opposed the concessions towards liberals and guarantees of civil liberties granted by the Charter of 1814. Charles gained influence within the French court after the assassination of his son, Charles Ferdinand, Duke of Berry, in 1820 and eventually succeeded his brother in 1824. His reign of almost six years proved to be deeply unpopular for, from the moment of his coronation in 1825, in which he tried to revive the practice of the royal torch. The governments appointed under his reign reimbursed further former landowners for the abolition of feudalism at the expense of bondholders increased the power of the Catholic Church and reimposed capital punishment for sacrilege, leading to conflict with the liberal majority chamber of deputies. Charles also initiated the French conquest of Algeria as a way to distract his citizens from domestic, domestic problems. Interesting. Anyway, that's Charles X for you, who had quite... He, who has or had quite an interesting biography trying to distract the citizenry from um, the domestic problems in France at the time um, by conquering Algeria. Okay, let's move on to the year 1888. Uh, this monument, known worldwide, also in the United States, it's called the Washington Monument. It was built between 1848 and 1884 and dedicated in 1885. So on this day, the Washington Monument, a marble-faced granite obelisk, which honors the first U.S. President, George Washington, opened to the public in Washington, D.C. So this is the Washington Monument, the Washington Memorial, which opened on this day. That's another picture of the Washington Monument. And this is the view from the Washington Mon Monument of Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. Moving swiftly on, 1940. So, John Lennon, British musician, was born on this day. Full name, listen to this, this is quite interesting. John Winston Ono Lennon. So he gets Ono from Presumably his wife's uh, last name, Yoko Ono. Quite interesting, you know, why not? MBE, so basically he was a member of the British Empire. Born John Winston Lennon. 
He was an English singer, songwriter, and peace activist who gained worldwide fame as a founder, co-lead vocalist, and rhythm guitarist of the Beatles. His songwriting partnership with Paul McCartney remains the most successful in musical history. In 1969, he started the Plastic Ono Band with his second wife, Yoko Ono. After the Beatles disbanded in 1970, Lennon continued as a solo artist and as Ono's collaborator. Born in Liverpool, Lennon becoming, became involved in the skiffle craze as a teenager. In 1956, he formed his first band, The Quarrymen, which evolved into the Beatles in 1960. He was initially the group's de facto leader, a role gradually ceded to McCartney. Lennon was characterized for the rebellious nature and acerbic wit in his music, writing, drawings on, on film and in interviews. In the mid-1960s, he had two books published. In his own right, so right is W-R-I-T-E, had a way with words, didn't he? And the Spaniard in the works, both collections of nonsensical writings and line drawings. Starting with 1967's All You Need Is Love, his songs were adopted as anthems by the anti-war movement and the larger counterculture. From 1968 to 1972, Lennon produced more than a dozen records with Ono, including a trilogy of avant-garde albums. His first solo LP, John Lennon, Plastic Ono Band, and the international top 10 singles, Give Peace a Chance, Instant Karma, Imagine, and Happy Xmas, War is Over. During these years, Lennon's outspokenness on political affairs increased with him criticizing Britain's involvement in the Nigerian Civil War and its support of the US in the Vietnam War. He held the two week long anti war demonstration, anti war demonstration bed ins for peace in 1969. So, bed ins is, you know, B E D I N S. Um, so, that was for peace, intended to promote peace. Well, obviously, that didn't happen. Controversial through his political and peace activism. After moving to New York City in 1971, he was subject to a three-year attempt by the Nixon administration to deport him. Interesting. So that's John Lennon for you who was born on this day. So, um, happy posthumous birthday, John Lennon. Let's move on to the year 1966, so exactly 26 years later, another British person, this time a politician, former Prime Minister, pictured here, David Cameron, who looks like the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger right here. Um, he was born on this day. He was a Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from the year 2010 to 2016. He was born on this day in 1966, a Conservative Party politician. He was a member of parliament for Whitney from, nine, from 2001 to 2016 and leader of the Conservative Party from 2005 to 2016. Born in London to an upper middle class family, Cameron was educated at Heather Down School, Eton College and Bras no, Bresonese College, Oxford. Brass and Nose, Brass and Nose, Brass and Nose College, Oxford. Right, I think I got that right. Okay, so happy birthday, Mr. Cameron, who would be 54 today? 54 today. Mr. Cameron is 54 years old today. 1969. On this day, Steve McQueen, pictured here, was born. Steve McQueen, he is a British director, screenwriter, and artist. He is now a Sir, so Sir Stephen Rodney McQueen, full name, commander of the British Empire, CBE, is a British filmmaker and video artist. He is known for his film, 12 Years a Slave, which was 
released in 2013, a historical adaptation of an 1853 slave narrative memoir for which he won the Academy Award for Best Picture, the BAFTA Award for Best Film, and the Golden Globe Award for Best Motion Picture Drama, as well as the New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Director. McQueen is the first black filmmaker to win the Academy Award for Best Picture. So, happy birthday, Steve McQueen, MBE, Steve McQueen, CBE, Commander of the British Empire, Sir Steve McQueen. And uh, there's a quote here which um, says, everyone deserves not just to survive, but to live. So this is a picture of him with um, the Golden Globe Award. Um, yeah, I think that's a Golden Globe Award he's holding. Okay, more pictures of him, his art. I shall show you in a little while. So Steve McQueen art and some more this is called as you can see here blues before sunrise i'm just going to move things a bit here okay march 7th 25th march 2012. show you some more pictures And this is uh, a bit of the Empire, the, um, what's it called now? Statue of Liberty in New York. Pictures. So, I quite like this one here. It's called Giardini. Picture made in 2009. So you can see 35 millimeter color film transferred to HD digital format sound 30 by 8 two channel synchronized video projection with surround sound. Interesting. Okay. Let's see if we can find one more. It's another one by. Steve McQueen is also called Giardini, made in 2009 as well. Same as the last one. Giardini as well, 2009. Okay, so let's move on to the next event of this day. This man pictured here, his name is Frank Robinson. He became the first black major league baseball manager and he was manager of the Cleveland Indians. Full name Frank Robinson. He was an American professional baseball outfielder and manager in major league baseball who played for five teams. From 1956 to 1976, the only player to be named most valuable player of both the National League and the American League. He was named the National League's most valuable player after leading the Cincinnati Reds to the pennant in 1961 and was named the American League most valuable player in 1966 with the Baltimore Orioles. After winning the Triple Crown, after winning the Triple Crown, Robinson's 49 home runs that year tied for the most any AL player between the 1962 between 1962 and 1989 and stood as a franchise record for 30 years. So I'm going to take that again. Robinson's 49 home runs, HR, that year tied for the most by any American League player between 1962 and 1989 and stood as a franchise record for 30 years so this is frank robinson who 
On this day in 1974, became the first Black Major League Baseball manager of Cleveland Indians. That's him. A little bit older. Now we move on to Anna Freud, who on this day in 1982 died in London. If you see the, uh, the name looks familiar, then yeah, this is Sigmund Freud's last child. His youngest child, she was also a psychoanalyst like that. She was an author. She was Austrian British, born in Vienna to Sigmund Freud and Martha Benes. She followed the path of her father and contributed to the field of psychoanalysis. Alongside Melanie Klein, she may be considered the founder of psychoanalytic child psychology. So that's Anna Freud, who died on this day in 1982. She was the daughter, last child of Sigmund Freud. You can go check out the video. I think I did a video of Sigmund Freud a few weeks ago. If I'm not able to find the video, just check it out on my channel and find out more about Sigmund Freud. But yeah, I will try and put a link here if I find the video. Okay, let's move on to the year 2004. First of all, let's see. There's one more picture. Quite funny. Um, so this is obviously in reference to Anna Freud. As you can see here, they say that Anna Freud was a real daddy's girl. She was definitely a real daddy's girl. Followed in the daddy's footsteps to become a psychoanalyst. Um, so 2004, on this day, history was made when elections were held in Afghanistan, the first Afghan presidential elections. So, I'll read a little bit about this. For the first time in Afghanistan's history, voters went to the polls to choose a president, selecting Hamid Kazai, who had served as the interim president over the fall of the Taliban regime in 2001. So, Hamid Kazai was selected or elected, not selected, elected president on this day. So, you can see more pictures of the um, historic day. Last but not least, on this day, this was the day in 2012 that Malala Yousafzai, a Taliban gunman, shot her on this day. She was 15, just 15 on this day. Um, she is a Pakistani activist, a vocal opponent of the ultra-conservative group's prohibition on the education of girls. Despite being struck in the head, she survived the assassination attempt. So that is Malala Yousafzai, who escaped death on this day in 2012. Um, I also have a video of her. She graduated a few months ago from um, one of the elite universities in the UK. I'm not sure whether it was Oxford or Cambridge. Well, go check out the video if I'm not able to find it. Um, go check it out. If I am able to find it, I'll put the link here as well. Okay, guys, I shall end today's Today in History on that note. Um, on a cherry note that this lady, this young lady, survived an assassination attempt on this day, and she has gone on to change the lives of hundreds of thousands of women around the world, possibly millions of women around the world. So guys, I shall see you tomorrow for another edition of Today in History. My name again is Sotonye Afiasimama. Thanks for dropping by. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Share this video to family and friends. Consider subscribing as well so that you receive updates of my video uploads. See you tomorrow. Stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.